Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Viz Artist. In this video, I'll explain you lesson number five, acids, bases, and salts. This is the chapter of NCRT Science, class seven. So let's start. So in this chapter, we learn about acids, bases, and how salts are formed, which is the process of neutralization. We learn about various indicators, and also we will learn about neutralization in daily lives. So let's start. Acids. Acids are sour in taste, it means they are sour. When you taste them, they are sour. They are acidic in nature, it means their nature is acidic. It is derived, the word acids is derived from the Latin word acer, which means sour. So this word acer means sour. Let's have a look at the various bases. Bases are bitter in taste. So they are their taste is a little bitter. They feel soapy, okay? When you make a solution of any base and rub them in your palms, it feels soapy. And the bases are basic in nature. Now let's see a few examples of bases and acids. So here are a few examples of acids. The name of the acid is acetic acid and it is found in vinegar. You must have seen your mother using vinegar in the kitchens. So that vinegar has acetic acid. Formic acid. So formic acid uh, is found in ant sting. When an ant stings you or bites you, it releases formic acid. We'll learn more about this in the further part of the chapter. Citric acid. So uh, citric acid is found in citric foods. You must have heard about citric foods, citrus foods. So they, examples of such fruits are orange, lemon, etc. Lactic acid. Lactic acid is found in curd. Oxalic acid. This acid is found in spinach. Ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is simply the uh, chemical name of vitamin C. So ascorbic acid or vitamin C is in citric foods, fruits, food, and amla. Then there is tartaric acid, which is found in tamarind, grapes, and unripe mangoes. Now let's see the example of bases. Calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is found in lime water. Ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide is found in window cleaners. There are, you must have seen the window cleaners which are used to clean the windows. Those are actually the ammonium hydroxide, which is a base. Sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. These are far found in soap. Soap, the soap you use to wash your hand, to bath and to clean your clothes, other things. That soap is actually a base because it feels soapy when you rub it. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide is found in milk of magnesia. It is another substance. We learn about it further. Neutral substances. Now we have seen acids and bases. Now what are neutral substances? Okay, substances are of three types. They are acid, the base, or they're neutral. So neutral substances are not acids, neither bases. They are not acids, nor bases. They are not, not bitter, nor sour. Means they are not acidic in nature. They're not basic in nature. They don't taste bitter nor sour. They might taste uh, otherwise is salty. <clears throat> they must taste sweet or they must be tasteless. These are formed through neutralization. Neutral substance are formed through neutralization. Now let's have a look at what is neutralization. So this is first of all, let's look at the equation acids plus base it is equals to salt plus water plus heat. So the reaction between an acid and a base is called neutralization. Salt and water are the products and heat is evolved. So when we mix acids and base together, they form like a reaction. It's a reaction between those two substances. 
And this reaction is called neutralization. The products of this reaction, this chemical reaction are salt and water. And the products, the products are salt and water. And heat is evolved. Heat is evolved means, heat is evolved means that it releases heat. Because when you will use test tubes, like you will add a little bit of acid and then base, you will see, see that, you will feel that the test tube is turned hot. This means that the heat is evolved means heat is there. Now let's see at a few examples. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide is equals to sodium chloride plus water. So hydrochloric acid, we know the acid which is in our stomachs, which is used for digestion, plus sodium hydroxide, it is also another type of acid, uh, sorry, base is equals to sodium chloride. Now sodium chloride is neither acid nor base because it is a salt, it is a salt, it is a salt. And salts are neither bases, neither acids because they are neutral and neutral substances are not acid nor bases. And water, water is also a, a product of this uh, reaction as we learned. So water is also there and heat is evolved. Okay, means heat is also produced. Now let's have a look at indicators. We can find out the nature of a substance by tasting them. But some substances cannot be tasted. For example, so. So uh, we know that we can find out that this is a acid, this is base, because when we taste them, like if we will taste lemon, it is so, means it is, means it is acid. And when we taste baking soda, it is bitter. This means that it is base. But we cannot taste a few substances like soap. Can we taste soap? No, because it is non-edible. And non-edible substances cannot be eaten or tasted because they can be harmful for our lives. There are some special substances that change color when added to acids and bases. These are called indicators. So um, now how can we find out the uh, nature of these substances like soap or other substances which we cannot taste? There are a few special substances. Okay, they are also neither acid nor base, but they change their color when they're added to acid and bases. So we can know that when this substance, special substance is added to base, it, its color is this. And when added to base, its color is this. So now we can know that which is acid and which is base. So these special substances are called indicators. So let's have a look at a few natural indicators. Natural indicators means the indicators that are in nature. In nature means um, they are not chemical, they are naturally available. The first one is litmus paper. This is obtained from lichen. So litmus paper is basically like a lichen, it is obtained litmus, and then its uh, solution is made. The solution is spread with uh, spread onto the paper. Okay, and then paper strips are formed of that, and those are called litmus paper. So now these litmus paper are either blue or red, so let's have a look what happens to acid with red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. Acids with red litmus paper have no change, means red litmus paper has no change with acids. And with base, the red litmus paper turns blue. Now the blue litmus paper has a complete uh, opposite reaction. It turns red with acid and uh, with base it has no change. Because base turns litmus paper into blue and blue litmus paper itself is blue. So we will not be able to see any changes. And red litmus paper itself is red. So when acids will change it red, we will not see any changes as it is red. The paper itself is red. Let's have a look at turmeric. Turmeric is another indicator which is yellow in color. We all know what is turmeric. We use it in our kitchens also for preparing dishes and other things. So turmeric is yellow in color. And when it is mixed with acids, now basically it is preferred to use turmeric solution and otherwise make a paste of turmeric and apply it on filter paper or other type of papers and make a turmeric paper. So don't use uh, turmeric uh, like 
you don't use the turmeric which is like a uh, dry don't use dry turmeric either make a paste of it and apply it on filter paper and make a turmeric paper and use it or what you do is make a turmeric solution now with acids turmeric turns with no change it has no change when mixed with acids but with base it turns red now let's have a look at china rose china rose is a type of flower okay it's a type of flower and we um, means we take the petals and make a solution with water and then use it and that a solution is pink in color the flower itself is also pink in color with acids a uh, china rose solution turns into magenta which is dark pinkish color and with bases it turns green green color now there's a chemical indicator called phenolphthalein which we are learning in this chapter so first of all it is colorless like water it has no color okay with acids when it is mixed it is still colorless means no change with bases it turns pink and with neutral substances again it turns colorless all neutral substances have no effect on indicator so this is a means whatever indicators that we have learned now they have no effect on indicate these indicators means the indicators stay the same with neutral substances use of neutralization in daily lives now let's have a look that how neutralization neutralization is used in daily lives now we know what is neutralization it is a chemical reaction between a acid and a base but how can we use it in daily lives the first one is indigestion now indigestion is basically hcl in stomach helps in digestion hcl is hydrochloric acid we have read about hydrochloric acid in neutralization which forms the which forms the salt okay we have seen in neutralization above over here hydrochloric acid so hydrochloric acid is the same hcl its chemical name is hcl so hcl is present in the stomach and it helps in digestion but too much acid can cause irritation you must have heard that acid burns your skin so inside also it feels irritated when the acid increases now our stomach has protection layers so our stomach doesn't feel irritated but sometimes when it increases it comes through to our food pipe and our food pipe doesn't have any protection so our food pipe feels irritated and a little bit of stomach also that is when we say we have got acidity you must have heard that your parents say that are we acidity acidity so this is what happens when you have acidity to neutralize the effect of this acid and acid such as milk of magnesia is taken so when so when uh, the acid increases we need to neutralize the effect so it will have no effect on us it will have no effects on us because it will not be acid not base so neutral substances are not irritational so to neutralize the effect we use antacids antacids mean when we will take the base it will neutralize and it will become neutral and we will not feel irritated so antacids are like the substances that which are bases and they work against the acids in our stomach so such as milk of magnesia milk of magnesia uh, we have seen milk of magnesia is like a type of bases okay milk of magnesia which is actually magnesium hydroxide so this milk of magnesia is taken and you must also have heard antacid tablets those are also bases and they neutralize the effect of hcl ant bite when ants bite they release formic acid which causes irritation in skin okay so i had told you that formic acid is present in ant bite this when ants bite they actually don't use their teeth what they do is release formic acid in our skin and this causes irritation formic acid can cause irritation in the skin it feels very irritated when formic acid is injected inside our skin and that is the feeling which we get when an ant bites to get relief from this irritation moist baking soda is rubbed over the skin to neutralize the effect of formic acid so now to neutralize this effect of this acid formic acid 
moist baking soda means a little wet baking soda is rubbed over the skin when we rub it it goes inside and neutralizes the formic acid and thus we feel relief also sometimes calamine solution is rubbed instead of moist baking soda calamine solution is used now let's have a look at soil treatment what is it when too much chemical fertilizers are used chemical fertilizers you must know that we use in farming so when we use too much chemical fertilizers remember it's chemical fertilizers not natural fertilizers natural fertilizers are not harmful but chemical fertilizers are when you, when used in a lot of quantity then the soil becomes either too acidic or too basic so the soil becomes very acidic or maybe it becomes very basic so then what happens what do farmers do and why do they need to uh, first of all you must have a question that why do they need to uh, protect the soil means turn it the way it was the neutral soil because plants don't grow well in this type of acidic or basic soil plants they don't grow well they are not growing good in this condition they don't grow well in acidic soil or if the soil is too basic they want proper fertile soil thus the acidic soil is treated with slacked lime which is calcium hydroxide or quick lime which is calcium oxide so the acidic soil if the soil is too acidic then we use slacked lime slaked lime which is calcium hydroxide this is the chemical name of the slaked lime or quick lime quick lime which is calcium oxide that neutralizes the effects of acid and the soil turns like it was before suitable for the plants if the soil is basic then it is treated with compost now what is compost you must have known compost is used to as a natural fertilizer also compost releases acids that neutralize the effects of the bases now if the soil is too basic a base if it is a basic soil then also the plants would grow to neutralize this effect it is treated with a compost now compost when it is put in soil it releases little bit of acids which neutralize the effect of the bases and the soil becomes again the way the plants needed to grow the last point is the factory waste factory wastes contain high amount of acids if it is allowed to flow without treatment into water bodies it can damage the life of aquatic animals and plants the factory wastes are neutralized by adding bases before dumping them into the water bodies to prevent pollution so now the factory wastes the factory wastes have high amounts of acids okay and if this is a uh, let and uh, if this acidic uh, waste is let flow in the water bodies without treatment without means purifying them without treatment if it's let if it is let to go in the water bodies it can be very dangerous it can damage the life of aquatic animals and plants and not only aquatic animals and plants even the humans which will use those water can get diseases can get diseases which can be harmful this factory wastes are neutralized by adding bases before dumping them in water bodies to prevent pollution and damage also so before factory wastes are dumped into the water bodies we they neutralize neutralize the acid by adding bases and then dump it into the water bodies so now it won't cause any trouble I mean it will pollute the water a little bit but it will prevent pollution and damage because it is not acidic it's neutral so it will not cause much problem it will be safe and good so i hope you understood the lesson is very easy only you have to understand the concepts of bases acids neutralization learn the examples of the acids and bases and understand the various indicators what is the effects on the of what is the effects of acids and bases on indicators and understand the use of neutralization in daily lives it's a very easy lesson i hope you understood it if you like this video don't forget to like it subscribe my channel and share it with your friends thank you bye bye